with our budget hearings for the Human Relations Commission, we have Mel Fowler-Green, and she's got some folks with her that I'll let you introduce here in a second. Uh, let me just uh, remind the folks at home that we are going to hear a lot of requests for funds over the coming days. We're going to hear more requests for funds than we're going to have available revenue. So at the end of all of these conversations, we'll work diligently to make sure we're allocating the resources for the, the best outcomes for our taxpayers in, in Davidson County. We appreciate that you all are here. We also have some council members who have joined us. We have Councilman Cooper and Councilman Ver, uh, Vercher who are both back there. Um, they represent the budget chair and the budget vice chair for Metro Council. So we're very excited to have you all with us today. Um, let me turn this over to you, Mel, and we'll start. We'll, we'll get started. Please introduce who you brought with you. Great. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I have with me today um, the chair of our commission, Frank True, and uh, vice chair, Phyllis Hildreth. Great to see you both. Thank you. And I'm going to let you just uh, <coughs> kick it off. I think you've got a okay. p some particular requests, so why don't you talk me through your budget request, and we'll, we'll talk about what that looks like. Sure. Um, we have two um, specific improvements um, that we're requesting this year. Um, one is a, um, a, a small budget increase to support our um, mobile diversity seminar that we um, offer to the police academy okay. and the PD. And, and that's... And, and Elaborate on that because I think that's an important program that you all do that's important and then tell me why you need the additional money what that's going to do sure um, so we offer a full day um, it, it's a cultural competence or cultural humility uh, seminar um, that seeks to bridge police cadets with the diverse communities that they are going to serve um, we concentrate on the uh, Muslim community, on uh, the New American community, uh, LGBTQ, um, African American community. Um, we also um, provide some connection with uh, this, this next coming one. We're going to provide some connection with the disability uh, community. Um, and what we really intend to do is to have um, open conversations around the city with those communities, asking what is it from your perspective um, that you think challenges the trustful relationship with law enforcement and what opportunities are there for bridging that trust. And so rather than sitting in a, set, you know, a, a conference room all day, um, we take the cadet class out on a bus to, uh, to meet the communities like where they live, where they worship, um, where they work. Um, and our um, additional funds requested um, support that program in a couple ways. Um, one, um, because we are going out to particular locations, um, for the most part, we have those locations um, donated. Right. Um, but we also include anywhere between 60 and 80 uh, volunteers throughout the day. Wow. Um, and so we would like to be able to at least cover costs for some of the venues. Um, we also would like to provide the not every one of our volunteers, but those who have spent a significant amount of time preparing for that conversation with some kind of acknowledgement. Um, we also provide breakfast and lunch. It is a full day. It's a full day. Like, serious full day. And we produce a, um, a resource guide for the cadets um, that has been uh, improving with each... Uh, seminar. And how, how many of these have you all done so we've, far? We've done two. Okay. And our third one is scheduled for June 12th. And you do this with all of the new incoming police cadet classes, is that right? Is that's that right. That's who your target um, is? That's correct. Right. Okay. Okay. We don't, we, we don't do it with any. We have a newcomer. We're going to, excuse me, I can't talk. I apologize. It's Monday morning and I can't get to work. <laughs> We're going to have a new fire recruit class mm -hmm. coming up here in a few weeks, a few months. Right. Is there any thought about maybe doing the fire class as well? Just I don't know if you thought about that. Is, is, if you think that's something we should think about doing. Um, 
To be honest, I, I would love to. Okay. Um, and we've also had conversations um, with MMPD about offering this kind of seminar for the lieutenant class, for okay. instance. Um, the, the struggle, frankly, is that um, you know, to manage that many volunteers, and to do it right, you really do have to get community members sure. involved. Sure. Um, and it, it's logistically time consuming, right? To, right. to, to, yeah. to yeah. Right. Um, and then, you know, and then feeding people, which you do have yeah. to do. It seems but, like in today's time, it seems like that. I'm not sure there's a better yeah. thing to be doing. Right. It sounds right. like a. That's what I'm just thinking out loud. And, and, and clearly, your, your $6,000 request is just for the one, one cadet class. So this is. It's two. two. It's for two. Okay. So it's for the, so it's 3,000. So, if you were to increase that at all because you were going to potentially cover the new fire recruit class and the new mm -hmm. lieutenant class, it would actually be an additional $6,000. Um, yes, assuming that the fire department had the same ability to provide the bus. Okay. Right, because MMPD does provide the chartered bus. Got it. Okay. Okay. So something to think about. And that that staff addition that you're looking for, that, that full-time staff addition, what, what's that a focus on? Um, our new uh, proposed staff is a, a program specialist um, who would certainly assist in the logistics of things like the Mobile Diversity Seminar mm -hmm. um, and some of our other uh, cultural competence trainings. But more importantly, they would spend the uh, a, a great deal of their time concentrating on issues of compliance, which we define um, pretty broadly. Okay. Um, we view our compliance program to include our Title VI training and monitoring, um, the direct complaints that we receive, other requests for assistance. Um, we, we do receive a lot of calls and emails, constituent services that may not fall directly in our mission. Um, we do try to provide every constituent right. with substantive assistance. Um, the program specialist would also assist with some research and data gathering related to compliance. Um, for instance, we have talked to a number of uh, agencies and um, partners around the city, and I think that there is some concern that we are going to see a challenge in the next few years to uh, uh, our constituents um, really getting the assistance they need from existing entities and resources around discrimination and perceived discrimination. So I think it's important for us to monitor whether or not the Nashvillians are r receiving assistance they need, and if not, how can we bridge that gap if possible? Um, and finally, our program specialist would um, provide direct support for a Respect Nashville coalition that we have been acting as a uh, program manager for. Got it. Okay. John, any I'm questions? very clear. <laughs> Rich, any additional questions? And, and Mel, I think you have some other folks here with you that are in the back. You want to give them a shout out too, because I know you got you brought you brought some nice looking folks back there. Hey guys. <laughs> Yes, I would like first um, to introduce one of our other commissioners, Peter Wolfolk. Yep. Thank you. Peter? And, uh, Barbara Gunlardi is our Director of Community Engagement. Um, Samantha Perez does Policy and Research. She's the Director of that program. And uh, Mark Etherly is our Director of Operations, Special Projects. He's the guy I say, how do I do X about everything? <laughs> and he figures it out for you. And he figures it out. I like that. <laughs> You have the entire staff. Right, yeah. yeah. This is my entire yeah, staff. Yeah, it's everybody's here, yeah. <laughs> so it's great. Um, I don't have any further questions for you. I appreciate all the work that you all do, appreciate the ask, appreciate the the request for additional mobile diversity training, seeing if we can actually magnify that effectiveness across our community. I appreciate that, too. So right. thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much. You guys much. have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. You bet. I feel better. I, feel better. I will. Yeah. Thank you, guys.